Hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC and today I'll be showing you how to rebuild a brake caliper on a dirt bike. The rear brake caliper is what applies the pressure that's created from the master cylinder in turn, squeezing the brake rotor in between the brake pads. Now inside of the brake caliper, we've got a piston cup, a piston seal, and a dust seal. Now the number of these components inside of here can vary depending on the design, but when it comes to dirt bikes, most of the front caliper is going to be a dual piston design and the rear calipers are going to be a single piston design. Now it's extremely rare that these parts will ever fail, however they do get dirty or a little sticky at times and the seals will become old and begin to dry out, especially if the caliper has not been maintenanced as often as it should be. So today we're going to show you how to rebuild the rear brake caliper on a 2015 KTM 300 XCW. Now to do this job, we're just going to need a few tools. So here we've got some rags, rubber gloves, safety glasses, some open-ended wrenches, some pick tools, an Allen wrench, and a toothbrush that will be used to lightly scrub and clean our brake caliper. Then we've got some Scotch-Brite, some grease, replacement brake fluid, some brake cleaner, drain pan. Then we've got our rear brake rebuild kit from All Balls. It's going to come with everything that we need. And we've got our Motion Pro brake caliper piston tool. And the last thing we will need is some compressed air. Before we begin, I just want to point out the brake fluid is corrosive, so it's important that you wear some rubber gloves to protect your hands as well as some safety glasses to protect your eyes. And it's also a good idea to have some rags around to wipe up any brake fluid if you're to spill any. Now, while everything's mounted up and in a fixed position, right now would be a good idea to go ahead and crack free your banjo bolt and then lightly seat it. That way, once we have the wheel removed and we're ready to remove the caliper, we can take off the brake line with ease. Now, the service manual for this bike states that before we remove the caliper, we need to remove the master cylinder's reservoir cap, and then we need to push on the brake caliper's body in towards the wheel, which will depress the brake caliper's piston. Now, once we've done all that, we can then remove our rear tire. With the rear tire removed, we can place our drain pan underneath the brake caliper and then remove the brake line. Be sure to have a clean rag handy to set your parts down on when they are removed. Since we're rebuilding the brake caliper anyways, we're going to go ahead and drain our master cylinder of all of its brake fluid. So we'll take our brake line, hold it over the drain pan, and then we'll cycle the foot brake until all of the fluid has been removed. Then we can remove the brake caliper with the brake stay from the swing arm. Then we can take a rag, we're going to place it onto our swing arm. That way we can catch any residual brake fluid that's going to drip out of the brake line. All right, so we've moved our caliper body and the brake stay up to the bench so that we can service it. Now, the next process on this caliper is we need to remove our brake pads. Now, to do that, we need to pull out these two clips, and then we can push out the brake pad pin and then remove our brake pads. Now, depending on your brake caliper design, it might be easier for you to just go ahead and remove your brake pads while your caliper and brake stay still mounted to the bike. Either way, we need to get our pads out. Now, once we've gotten to this point, we can remove our caliper from the brake stay. Next, we can begin to remove the caliper's piston. Now, the Motion Pro caliper piston removal tool works really great for this if the inner diameter of the caliper's piston is between 15 and 28 millimeters in diameter. Now unfortunately ours is a little too small for that so in order to remove this we'll be using some compressed air. Now before we apply compressed air to the banjo bolt fitting which will force the caliper's piston out we're going to take a standard wrench here we're going to place it into a rag fold it over like so and then we're going to place it onto the back side of the caliper body and once we apply the compressed air, it will force this piston cup out and the wrench and rag will catch it. Now, keep in mind you want to keep your fingers out of the area of where the piston will be coming out of. And we're going to just start by slowly applying a small amount of compressed air. Now, as you can see, the piston has started to work its way out of the caliper's body. We can remove our wrench and rag. And from here, we should be able to grab the piston and work it out. When removing the caliper's piston, be sure not to use pliers or channel lock pliers of any sorts as you don't want to damage the outer diameter of the piston. Next, we can remove the two O-rings that sit inside of the body. We've got our dust seal and the piston seal. We're going to take our pick, and when you go to remove these, be careful not to scratch or damage the piston caliper's body. 
Now, as you can see here, there is a difference between these two seals. They are different thicknesses. Now, the one that is thinner is going to be sitting closest to the brake pad, while the one that is thicker is going to be sitting the farthest from the brake pad when they're installed into the caliper's body. Next, we can begin cleaning the caliper's body. Now, before we do that, we're going to remove this rubber grommet here, as we've got a replacement. Now, we don't want to take the scotch Brite and get inside of where the piston is going to sit in the caliper body, as we do not want to scratch or damage this inner surface. Now, we're going to take some brake cleaner, spray this down. Now, as you can see, we've got some debris inside of here, some old residual brake fluid. Now, to get that scrubbed clean, this is where our toothbrush will come in handy. We've got some soft bristles, and it's not going to scratch the inner diameter surface. Once you've got the caliper scrubbed clean, be sure to spray it off with some compressed air to make sure that you remove all the dirt and debris. Now, before we begin the reassembly of our parts here, we want to make sure that we give everything a really good inspection. You want to inspect the inner diameter of the caliper's body for any pitting, scratches, or extreme oxidation. If you have any of those present, you will want to look into replacing your caliper body. Now, you'll also want to look for some of those same things on the caliper's piston. Again, any scratches, pitting, or excessive oxidation you will want to look into replacing it. Ours is damaged right here, as you can see where it makes contact with the brake pad. So just for good measure while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and replace it with a new piston. With all of our parts in good condition, we can go ahead and begin the reassembly process. Now to do that, we're gonna take some brake fluid. We're going to pour just a little bit here into the cap. We're going to start with the thicker of the two seals. Obviously you can see there's a difference here and coat the seal with the brake fluid then we can install it into the caliper body. Now the thicker one's gonna sit on the furthest down ring landing, so make sure that when you're installing this, you're aware of that. Now take your time with this part. It may be a little bit difficult, but just take your time and work the seal into place. Once you've got the seal set inside, go ahead and run your finger around the inner diameter to make sure that it's fully seated and that it's not twisted or bound up in any kind of way. Next, we can take the thinner of the two seals. We're gonna coat it with some brake fluid then we can place it into the first landing that's inside of the caliper body. And again, double check it with your finger to make sure that it is fully seated and it's not bound or twisted up in any way. Next, we can begin the installation of the caliper's piston. Now, before we install this, we're gonna coat it with some brake fluid. Now, as you begin to insert the piston into the caliper's body, you wanna make sure and try to keep it as square as possible so take your time with this, this part, make sure you go nice and slow, just kind of slowly work the piston into the caliper body. Now if it starts to become incredibly difficult in order to fit the piston into the body, go ahead and remove it again, lube it up with some more brake fluid, and then try again. Now you will want to press the piston all the way into the caliper body as when we go to reinstall this and bleed the system, we'll just make for an easier bleeding process as there's less volume for air to get trapped inside. Next, we can install the new rubber grommet that's provided in the kit. So we're just gonna take a very small amount of grease. We're just gonna coat this lightly, and then install it into the caliper. Next, we can install our leaf spring. Now, as you can see, our old one here is pretty old and rusty, so we're just gonna go ahead and replace it with a new one. Next, we can get ready to install our brake pads. Our old brake pads were pretty tattered, so we're gonna go ahead and replace them with some new ones from Tusk. Now, before we get these pads installed, we're going to take our brake pad pin, we're going to lightly coat it with some grease. And we can install this into the caliper body through our brake pads themselves. So now we're looking at the top side of our caliper, we can use our pick tool to get the holes aligned on the brake pad pin. And we'll take our brake pad pin clips, we're going to install these into the little holes on the brake pad pin. Now you want to have this tab right here, this L shape, you want this going to be, to be hanging over the casting on the caliper body. Make sure that everything's locked and in place like it should be, then we can take this and install it onto our brake stay. We're going to replace this rubber grommet right here with the replacement one that came in our kit. Before installing the new grommet, make sure that where it's going to be inserted is nice and clean. Give it a good inspection to make sure that it's installed correctly. Next, we can take just a small amount of grease. We're gonna lightly coat this pin right here on the brake stay. And we'll do the same on the caliper's pin. And you can reinstall your caliper onto the brake stay. 
take your time when doing this as you don't want to bend any of the brake components. So now we can take our brake caliper stay and we can refit it to the swing arm and then we can reinstall the rear tire. Once the tire is installed, be sure to torque the axle nut to 59 foot-pounds. But when it comes to you and your bike, always be sure to reference your service manual. The kit's also going to come with a replacement dust cap for the brake line's bleed screw. So if yours is in bad shape, before you refit the brake line to the caliper, be sure to replace this. Next, we can fit our banjo bolt with the new crush washers that have been provided in the kit. Place one crush washer onto the banjo bolt itself, thread it through the fitting on the brake line, then place the last banjo bolt on. Then we can thread the bolt into the caliper and torque to 22 foot-pounds. Then we can top off the brake's reservoir, place a rag underneath the bleeder bolt on the caliper. Then we can start pumping on the foot brake, then hold it down. Then we can crack open the bleed screw on our caliper to release any air bubbles so that we can bleed the brakes. Now once you've tightened up the bleed screw on the caliper, we can then release the foot brake then repeat the same process until our brakes are nice and tight. If you need help with bleeding your brakes, be sure to check out our how-to video on motorcycle and ATV brake bleeding. So once you've got your braking system bled free of air, you can top off your reservoir, install the reservoir cap, and then you're gonna wanna spray off any excess brake fluid that is spilled in the process with either some brake cleaner and or some contact cleaner than wipe clean with a rag. And that's it, that's really all there is to it when it comes to rebuilding the rear brake caliper. Now this is something that's really good to know how to do, especially if you wanna get the best performance out of your bike's braking system, and it can help you to avoid potential problems with your braking system down the road. Now if you have any questions as to what we've done here today, feel free to leave us a comment below and we'll be sure to get an answer back to you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how-tos, and top fives. And also see our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com where you can find all the parts that you'll need to keep your bike in good shape. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching and keep turning those wrenches.